At the end of the last presentation, I presented a problem to think about in terms of converting a numeric grade to a letter grade. And I asked you to think about that in terms of the logic that would be needed to implement that solution. In this presentation, we work together and solve that problem in SNAP. So when we begin our program, we will do the when flag click block, and then we're going to ask the user to provide for us the number grade. So we'll ask them you know, something to the effect of what grade did you receive, and we'll then use the answer variable to retrieve the result. So we'll ask them what grade do we receive, and we want to then create a series of if statements. There's ifs and there's if elses right beside each other, and in this case the if statement we're looking for, we want to check to see if the answer that the user provided is greater than 89. So anything from 90 to 100 would give us an A. So we found anything greater than 89, and what we'd like to say is something like you earned an A. So we'll say that for two seconds, and then we will kind of cheat here and just duplicate. So instead of typing that all over again, I will just uh, duplicate the if block. So I, I right clicked on the if block, duplicated it. Now I'm changing the values. So 79 gives me a B. I'm duplicating it again. And in this case, 69 is going to give me a C. Actually, I stuck it in the wrong spot. So you got to be careful with that. That's a be a problem. So I move that down now. I want to look for um, what, what I need to get in order to have a D. So anything greater than the 59. And I have a special case when um, it's an F. So anything less than 60 would give me an F. So in this case I'm going to have a less than operator and I will then check the answer against 60. So if we run this program after we're done, we have to input different values and test the program. So we want to put in numbers for every possible grade that we're looking at. So I'll start down with the F value first. So I'm entering uh, an F grade. And then uh, let's try the next one. Let's see what happens when we enter something that should be a D. Now it gets really interesting here when we enter a C. Watch what happens when I enter a C. So when I enter a C value, it says I, enter, I earned a C, then it says I earned a D. Did you catch that? So let's, let's try this one more time now and looking at something in the B level. So the B, I get a B, I get a C, I get a D. So it's giving me all three of those. Then even worse, if I have a perfect score, I enter, get a 100, it will say that I earned an A, B, C, and a D. So why is that happening? Well, if you look at the logic and study this and try to play like you're the computer, uh, if you're the SNAP translator, it says if I have greater than 89, I'm going to write an A, which is true for uh, 100. 100 is greater than 79 also, so I write B. 100 is greater than that, I write C. I write a D because of that. I don't write F because 100 is not less than 60. So in that case, I have all of the different um, values. So let's fix this. And so I, I wrote a, a, uh, a program by mistake. So we're going to fix it now. It might be useful to show your students that. And what I'm doing is instead of on the cases where I have B, C, and D, I'm putting a bounding condition. So if you look real close at this program, if the answer is greater than and less than a certain bound. So in this case, if I have greater than 79 and less than 90, I have a B. And then I'm duplicating some of these blocks here. Uh, just making a little bit, let me see, copy this in and out. Sometimes it's a little tricky getting into the slots. So here, if I, um, I want to change this to if I have a 69, uh, and I have uh, greater than 69 and, and less than 80. That would give me a C. And then the last one here, if I am greater than 59 and less than 70, I'm in the D range. So what I've done here that the other program didn't is I forced a range. 
So if I check uh, the, the answer against this range, I can better delineate what the letter grade would be. That wasn't done before, so in the previous case, I kept going down the if statements and entering them all. So now if I have a 100, I only um, have the true on the, the uh, one associated with an A, and so on. So study this closely. Make sure you understand that what I've done here is I've bounded the check with both a relational and a logical operator. So the greater than, less than expressions that are connected with an and. And what I want to be able to do then is um, you know, check the bounds. There's a third way that we could solve this. So we'll solve this one now using a combination of if-elses. So here's the case if I have an A so if I'm greater than 89, I have an A. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create nested if-else. So this is an if-else inside of another if-else. So the logic here can be a little bit challenging, so make sure you study this. So um, if I'm not greater than 89, I go into the else part of the first if, and now I'm checking to see if, if I'm greater than um, 79. And I'm writing out a B in that case. If you ch check what I'm doing here, I keep adding an if-else inside of another if-else. So this is like a third layer of if-elses. So it's an if-else inside of an if-else inside of an if-else inside the else clause. And I'm just now checking for 69. And if I have a 69, I have a C. And then the final if-else is coming up here. So the final if-else will be able to check whether I have a D or an F. So if I am um, greater than 59, I can declare that I have, at this point, a D. Otherwise, the else part of this last one will declare that I have an F. So if you check the logic of this by nesting these if-elses, it's very similar to doing the, the previous version where I had a composition of ands where I checked the boundaries of the values from for example, from, from 80 to, to 89 was a B. So if I run this, I also get the same answer. And you can check that I have a B in that case. And then if I enter another, I get a C. So this particular program also works. And as we're testing our programs, we want to make sure that we provide a, a test case, as we call it, where we're inputting values that make my entire program work. And test every possible path that could be executed. And so what we've done here is we've solved the convert grader program first by actually making a mistake and talking about why that happens. That could be very useful to your students. And then we came back and discussed two possible solutions. There's more than one way to solve a problem and we showed uh, two different ways here. So we would like you to go back and try these on your own. Create the if statement that works that has the ands of the or the uses the and to compose two different uh, comparisons and then try this also as a second program that has nested if elses and you can you can begin to save these programs also in your browser for future use